Hello guys, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA predicted phenotype traits and GED match results of a Yamne man from Samara. This is what he is predicted to look like. He's predicted to have brown color eyes, Greek shaped nose and black hair. With Wysek he's also predicted to have dark eyes and hair. And with Snipper Freak he's also predicted to have dark eyes and hair and actually white skin. He was heterozygous for blue eye haplotype 1. He did not have BH2 or BH4. Uh, which no BH2 also means he did not have BH3. That's a given. Uh, he's got some variants for lighter Eurasian skin, but he's also got some variants for intermediate skin tone, especially uh, in the SLC45A2 region. He's got two copies of H63D in the HFE gene. Uh, now, this is often called the Celtic curse. It's hemochromatosis, which is the buildup of iron in the blood, excessive iron in the blood. Uh, it's most prevalent today in Celts and Scottish and Irish people. Uh, I, I'm Russian. I also have this genotype here, which is kind of interesting. Uh, he's got heterozygous genotype in profenitine pro variation of DRD2, which means intermediate number of dopamine D2 receptors, more than what's typical for Europeans, less than what's typical for everybody outside of Europe. And he's got A1, A2 genotype in TAC1 variation of uh, DRD2. Now, A1, the A1 variant is pretty rare for humans, and it tends to cause um, higher odds of ADHD, higher odds of Parkinson's and all around less dopamine D2 receptors. He's actually heterozygous for comts val met variation, which means uh, he's somewhat intermediate between the met met genotype and the val val genotype. Uh, it's a pretty typical genotype for any, for any uh, European and basically intermediate levels of dopamine in the brain. Uh, he's got the sociopath gene, he's got two derived variants in OXTR, both of the variations that have to do with sociopathy, he's got both of them. Uh, very interesting stuff, and he does not have the European lactose persistence mutation. Uh, you might expect the lactose persistence mutation to, in Europeans to come from the steppe people because they were the ones who uh, were, you know, cattle herding and all that stuff, but actually I have yet to see a Yamne individual with the European lactose persistence mutation. Maybe it's just much more recent than we uh, imagine. He does not have the mutation that protects against myopia, which is very interesting. Uh, might have needed glasses to see in a distance, and uh, does not have derived EDAR, so no East Asian facial traits, no shovel-shaped incisors, no epicanthic folds. Now, moving on to polygenic traits, he's got a super high risk score for coronary heart disease, he's got a high risk score for Crohn's disease, uh, he's got a high risk score for schizophrenia, uh, he's got a high risk score for brain aneurysm, he's got a average risk score for type 2 diabetes, uh, he's got an average risk score for Parkinson's disease. Uh, he's got an average risk score for bipolar disorder. Uh, he's got a below average risk score for type 1 diabetes. He's got a average risk score for asthma. And he's got an average risk score for stroke. This is what he scores with Eurogenes K13. Pretty typical result for any Yamne. You can see he's lacking West Mediterranean and East Mediterranean. Uh, but he does score some North Atlantic and you might expect him to score just Baltic plus West Asian. The reason he's scoring North Atlantic is because uh, Yamne had a lot of affinities that are unique to North Atlantic, that are unique to Northwest Europeans, which this category is based on. This is what he scores with MDLPK11. He's basically half Eastern Hunter Gatherer, which is actually misnamed as VHG here, and half Caucasus Hunter Gatherer, which is misnamed as EHG here. So just keep that in mind. EHG is Caucasus, and WHG is Eastern Hunter Gatherer plus Western Hunter Gatherer. He is closest to Poltavka here, but Poltavka is basically the same as um, Yamne in terms of ancestry. Poltavka and Yamne are. are they can be used interchangeably uh, in these oracles. And this is what he scores with MDLPK16. Interesting that he's scoring a lot of step. Uh, the step category here, they did a good job isolating the step specific drift uh, that was unique to Yamne people. And this is what he scores with Harappa World. Uh, as you can see, most of his Caucasus or West Asian admixture is actually Baloch and not Caucasian. Uh, and this is the reason why North Northwest Europeans, for example, score a lot of Baloch. It's because Baloch here captures the Caucasus hunter gatherer admixture that was present in Yamne. And this is what he scores with Pan DNA LK10. Uh, basically, half CHG and the other half is uh, Western hunter gatherers and everything that's related to hunter gatherers in Europe. This is what he scores with Pan DNA LK12. Very interesting result because here he's actually also scoring 5.3% Anatolian Neolithic and some Amerindian, but Amerindian is just capturing the A ancient North Eurasian affinities in Eastern hunter gatherers. He is closest to itself actually with the Oracle. Uh, Yamne Samara I0231 is the sample that this video is about, so it's closest to itself. And it's getting modeled as a mixture of itself plus various bell beakers or other Yamnans. Uh, basically, it seems that he has a slight shift from this sample towards 
uh, the farmers and Western hunter gatherers. This is what he scores with ancient Eurasia K6. He's scoring a lot of West European hunter gatherer way too much. That's because this category is misnamed. Uh, it doesn't actually represent Western European hunter gatherers. Western European don't hunt hunter gatherers don't score 100% of it, and it's not even really representing them. It's representing something a lot more Eastern and Southern than them. Uh, it's a modern European uh, component rather than an ancient European component is what I'm trying to say. Uh, this is what he scores with Gidrosia K3. Basically a mixture of West Eurasian and East Eurasian. There is a, lot, a little bit of East Eurasian here, but most of these East Eurasian affinities would probably go away as time goes on. So uh, he's a Copper Age individual as you move further into the Bronze and Iron Age. His descendants uh, lose the East Eurasian affinities and gain more Caucasoid Drift. Thanks for watching until the end. You can download the sample in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. There's actually going to be another link in the description to another sample, also from the Yamna culture. And I want to remind you guys that you can find every file that I've analyzed, every individual file, every individual genome that I've made videos on. You can find all of them in my drive folder.